Next, we from Munich, Germany, we have Revion. Presenting for Revion, founder and CEO, Stefan Herman and Ada Fernandez. Come on out, guys. Imagine we were living in 1948. In 1948, our pitch could have started with a quote like this. <clears throat> but since we're living in 2022, the vast majority of people on our planet has bigger problems than sports cars. I mean, way bigger problems. We are facing global warming and a war-derived energy crisis with skyrocketing energy prices. Still, we are producing up to 85% of our global energy demand through combustion-based power systems burning fossil fuels, a technology that is essentially still the same as in 1948. These combustion power plants fail. They are highly inefficient, they are not flexible, and they emit millions of tons of CO2. So still in 2022, we could not find the power plant we dreamed of. So we decided to build it ourselves. We are Riverian, and we have developed a true game changer in power generation. Our solution produces power at a groundbreaking efficiency of 80%. It is fully reversible, it is plug and play, and it even has a carbon negative footprint. Let's have a look inside. Our technology combines three major building blocks in a new and unique way. The heart of the plant is a solid oxide fuel cell module. The fuel cells produce power without combustion, but through electrochemical oxidation. To this, we add a CO2 separation unit and a methanation reactor. But why is that so much better? Conventional power plants, like this internal combustion engine, produce power at a poor efficiency and emit vast amounts of off-gas to the atmosphere. They are inherently limited in efficiency by the combustion process through thermodynamics. Existing power plants using solid oxide fuel cells, like the very same that we are using, have a bit higher efficiency, but still emit their off-gas to the atmosphere. Their efficiency is, however, not limited by the fuel cell thermodynamics, but by their system design. I analyzed these systems in detail during my PhD and found that the main reason is incomplete fuel conversion in the fuel cells. This leads to a fuel loss of up to 30% through, again, simply burning it. This is the main thing that we have changed. In our Riverian units, we have eliminated the combustion completely. By adding the two components that we showed before to the fuel cells and operating the system in a closed cycle, we uh, achieve 100% fuel conversion and 80% electric efficiency. On top of that, there is no off-gas anymore, but we just produce water and pure CO2, which now becomes a valuable product. And finally, our new system design is reversible, meaning it can also produce gas from excess power. Biogas plants are our first target market. Here, when there is not enough solar or wind power in the power grid, we produce renewable power from the biogas while separating pure CO2. Long-term storage of this biogenic CO2, in turn, enables negative CO2 emissions. When the sun is showing up and suddenly the grid is flooded with renewable energy, we take excess power from that to produce either green hydrogen or renewable methane. This enables long-term energy storage. For our customers, the doubling in electric efficiency, first of all, means doubling revenues from electricity. With the additional revenues from the reversible operation, they can overall more than five-fold their income. So let's have a look at the real thing. We are live with my co-founder Felix in Munich, and he is now walking into our containerized power plant. Wow. First of all, to the right, you can see the CO2 separation. This is a pressure swing adsorption system that removes the CO2 out of our system. What you can hear is the compressor next to the CO2 separation that compresses the feed gas to about three bar. Next to that, there's our gas cleaning unit that protects the fuel cells from damage. Then there's a humidification system that increases the energy efficiency. And behind that, you can see our methanation reactor. And finally, there are the main heat exchangers that heat the gas and the air to the fuel cell operating temp uh, temperature of around 600 centigrade and the fuel cells that are packed into a thick thermal insulation box. Thank you, Felix. Move back to the presentation, please. One single of our Riverian containers 
can provide up to 500 households with renewable gas and power, while separating almost two kilotons of CO2 from the atmosphere every year. 40,000 of these can equip all existing biogas plants in Germany, for example, and produce up to 30% of the overall German power demand, half of the last year's Russian gas imports, and reduce our overall emissions by 20%. Globally, by using the available sustainable biogenic resources, we can replace all fossil-based power plants, which is a 7 trillion US dollar market, and remove the equivalent of the entire US CO2 emissions from the atmosphere every year. In times of war, global warming, and extreme energy prices, join us to provide the world with decentralized, carbon negative, <coughs> and highly efficient power plants. Thank you very much. Thank you. Charles, let's start with you this time. Really impressive. Can you talk a little bit just about deployment and how you roll something like this out? Sure. So uh, right now we are building all of these units ourselves. So um, we are in a phase where we're now putting pilots out. And um, this is, of course, nothing that we will do for a mass manufacturing. So um, as soon as we have a really design freeze for a series production, we will externalize a lot of the production. We, have, uh, we are already in discussions with a lot of partners that will manufacture hundreds of identical uh, sub-modules for us that we will just uh, then put together, uh, put our software on that, and then uh, qualify and then put the customers. Thank you. Dave? Yeah, I guess um, I'd love to go a layer deeper into all of the different, like what are the connections that need to come into this box? Uh, and, and how do you work with the municipality in order to get the clearances to provide all of these connections into the box? Yeah, good question. So um, you just basically need to plug in the gas line from the biogas and the electricity. The unit is fully automated, so it, uh, it can just run. You just tell it, please now produce power, and uh, it will just ramp up. Um, and in terms of, uh, um, how do you call that, uh, permissions, um, we have already uh, done field tests and run through all the permission process. So there's, uh, in terms of emissions, noise, and so on, you have to qualify. Mm -hmm. and, um, but we know the process, and uh, at least for the German market for now, yeah. it will be different in the US and so on. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, it's not a big problem because we are not emitting anything. Mm -hmm. There's nothing coming out that is hazardous to the environment. So actually, it's much easier to qualify our units compared to the traditional biogas plant that would have a combustion engine because they have to, to uh, st stick to certain NOx levels and things like that, which are now a topic for us. Thank you. Milo? Uh, could you talk about any IP portfolio that you have? Right, yeah. We have uh, six patent families that are covering um, basically different aspects and the whole system design. So the oldest ones are the system design patents that are already also regionalized, in, uh, regionalized worldwide, um, and uh, the newer ones that are still in the PCT phase um, that cover basically upgrades to our design. Yeah. Emily? So incredible objective, and replacing all fossil fuel plants is just no small endeavor. Curious, as you think about which markets you would likely prioritize, and what are the, what are the, what's the greatest friction points in your mind as it relates to regulatory, et cetera, to, to determine the efficacy of what you're building? Yeah, so uh, in terms of target markets, um, Germany by itself is, uh, is 40,000 uh, units to deploy, so quite a way to go. And uh, we try to keep it regional first because uh, we also have to do maintenance and so on. Um, but then, of course, uh, finally, we want to go worldwide. And the second question was? Yeah, what do you think the biggest friction points are as, you're, as the companies, the, the technology is being evaluated to determine that they'd be willing to open up and replace massive power plants today? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, we are um, stepping up against the combustion engine um, market. Yes. But <laughs> since our technology is vastly superior and can generate much more income, um, there is not really a competition. So as it more depends on how much we can produce, actually. Um, 
Are there certain stakeholders that you need to sell into to get buy-in to ultimately replace this core infrastructure? I think is, is what I was trying to get at. I, I didn't understand that. Uh, Sorry, are there specific stakeholders that you really need to get buy-in from in order to replace this core infrastructure? Um, yes, so stakeholders or our customers are basically all across the, the biogas sector. So from individual farmers up to big utilities. And um, well, they have different uh, cycles in terms of sales and so on. The farmers are individually owning their plants, so it's really quick. Um, and uh, we have w quite a few of them already signed up. Um, and uh, for the utilities, it's longer. And for municipalities, um, uh, we don't have any uh, customer relations uh, yet. Great. Thank you. Jameson? Terrific. Um, thank you for the presentation. You know, it's rare to see solutions that have such dramatic impact, both from a sustainability perspective and from a financial perspective, um, you know, for your users. So kudos to you on that. I'm curious on the manufacturing process for creating one of these units. You know, how long does it take? How much does it cost today? And where do you see that going in future? Right. So in terms of uh, manufacturing, we are right now doing all in-house. I mean, of course, we buy things like blowers and so on, uh, but integrate everything ourselves and weld all the containers, the cylinders that you see and so on. Um, and uh, of course, as uh, discussed, we, we externalize more and more of that. Um, and uh, the second part of the question again? Yeah. Uh, just like the amount of time that it takes and the cost for a single unit. Right, yeah. yeah. For, for the pilots right now, it takes a few months each. Yeah. But finally, uh, we'll arrive for the series production, uh, putting out like two to three to four to five to hundreds a week so yep. at some point. Got it. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Give them a round of applause.